Hey guys, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and today I come to you with a special treat, a full unboxing and review of the Huion Canvas GT191 V2. Now, breaking into the box, let's start to look at what we have inside. First off, we have our thank you note. So thank you, Huion, and, a, and a you're welcome for them, I assume. And you have the installation CD, and inside that you'll notice a cleaning cloth, which Everybody and their grandmother sends products with cleaning cloths, so I never use them. I have like a drawer with about 800 cleaning cloths from every product I've ever purchased, but you know, it's thoughtful that they throw it in. It's a nice little courtesy. Uh, and installation CDs, if you still have a, uh, um, an optical drive in your computer, then definitely you could use that, but I usually go online and download drivers from the site directly. You usually get the most updated drivers that way. That's what I personally recommend. Here we have their newly designed, I believe it's a one size fits all uh, anti-fouling glove. I've actually been using Huion anti-fouling gloves, well, since I've used pen displays, to be honest with you. It's been my go-to brand. I really like them. This is a new design with a bit more of a stretch fabric, and I will give you my opinion on this moving forward. Uh, then, of course, we have the pen holder. Uh, if you unscrew it, uh, you can find the pen nib remover and the uh, additional replacement pen nibs inside. Although, from my personal experience, unless you're working with ones that have a felt or a rubber tip to them, they don't wear out. I'm still using the same uh, pen, uh, plastic pen nib that I've been using since I purchased my uh, main pen display. Never needed to use it. Those On a pen display, they don't wear down. On a, on a, a tablet, a textured tablet, they do tend to uh, wear out a little bit quicker. And last but not least, of course, we have the Huion pen with the two, uh, with the two uh, buttons, the up and down button that you can set. You can customize those to whatever settings you want, depending on which program you use. And as far as the feel goes, it's nice. It's got a nice rubberized grip. It's something you might, if you've worked with other uh, drawing pen uh, drawing pen displays, you'll be familiar with that. If I compared it to, you know, Wacom, for instance, uh, it's got a very similar feel to it, a little bit lighter in the hand, but it doesn't require batteries, which is awesome. It's it's a uh, standalone and uh, it doesn't need to be charged or anything like that. So it's uh, a nice pen. It's definitely functional as far as the weight and feel of it goes. But of course, I'll give you a more comprehensive opinion on that moving forward. Next, we have our power cable and adapter. We also, it comes uh, uh, very thoughtfully with a tool, kind of an Allen key slash uh, screwdriver that you're gonna be using. I'll, I ended up using my own screwdriver just for the sake of it, but you have access to that as well. So that's awesome. You don't have to go and look for tools. Little screws in a little bag, the little black screws. You're gonna wanna make sure to put those somewhere with high contrast and like a white bowl because those would be super easy to lose. And if you do, you're kind of in trouble. So make sure to hold on to those. Next, we have the stand. Uh, the stand feels good. It's sturdy. It's not too weighted, um, but it's got a nice grippy surface to it. And if you look at the top, there's you'll I'll demonstrate that further later on, but you're gonna see that there's a little button. You have to pull it outwards and that will unlock and help you adjust that stand to any setting you want from all the way down to all the way up vertically, depending on your preference. The last few items are the cables, the display cables. You're gonna need three cables in order to get the thing running. You're gonna need a USB, in this particular case, you've got the, the older VGA uh, uh, cables, but the other option is HDMI, which is you're gonna get a better quality image with uh, HDMI and better responsiveness. That's my personal preference. Um, but you have those two options, which is great. Um, and you're going to need the power cable. So you need those three to get the thing working. And last but not least, we have the star of the show, the display itself. As I mentioned earlier, a nice size, a nice uh, uh, usable size, but a nice lightweight, making it very versatile, very portable, something you can move around on your desk or maybe even travel with. Um, and taking off the, the plastic on the front, it's got a nice anti-glare surface to it. It's gonna be nice to see how it, how it looks once we get the display running. And in the back, we can see all of our cable insertions and um, instructions, a sticker right on the back of it showing you how to set up the stand and everything like that. I think it's a smart move because it's so easy to lose instruct instructions and stuff like that. So just having that right on the back of the display is awesome. Now, honestly, when it comes to the setup, at least in terms of the stand itself, there's not much to say. Four screws, four holes screwed in. Make sure you've got it on the right side. So the, the part that's rubberized, it's gonna go on the bottom is gonna be on the side of the display 
uh, where the Huion logo is. Just flip it over so you can see that. But that's pretty self-explanatory stuff. You're gonna want the 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 actual stand part itself to be overlapping where the cables are gonna be inserted. And remember, very important as well, that uh, you're gonna want to put a blanket. I have a little baby blanket I set up on the table just to keep the display in, in good shape, but you don't wanna scratch your display by laying it flat on some hard surface that might have debris or something like that that can scratch the display. Screw it in with the four screws. The only thing you're gonna notice is you're gonna to have to adjust the stand back and forth. You're gonna to have to open and close it to gain access to the screws themselves, but this is pretty uneventful stuff. So let's skip straight to the uh, plugging it in and drawing side of things. Now, to get the display up and working, you're going to want to take care of two things. The first is cabling. The second is drivers. You're gonna to wanna to have your drivers installed. Like I mentioned, I'd go straight to the Huion website and download the latest version of the drivers directly from their site. Just look up uh, Huion GT191 V2 drivers and it'll take you straight to the right page. It's very straightforward. Uh, the other thing to take into account is, one of the things that I realized was um, you cannot install it on a computer that already has an other pen display installed. You're gonna notice that you're gonna get halfway through the installation process and it's going to stop. Uh, I have my Cintiq, my 27QHD uh, installed on my main computer. Uh, so I realized I couldn't, I, it kept crashing on me. So you're gonna want to either A, uninstall your other uh, uh, display driver, which I wouldn't do because this is my work computer. So I wanted to make sure, I didn't wanna mess around with drivers and stuff like that. But instead I uh, installed it on a better test subject, which is my daughter's computer, which did not have a pen display uh, connected. But if you have a Wacom tablet, any drawing tablet, be it a desktop tablet or a drawing pen display, you're gonna to want to uninstall those before you install this one because it's not compatible with both. And don't regard this as being some, you know, proprietary garbage move, right? It has nothing to do with that. It's because pen displays require certain file types in order to function and they all use the same technology. So you have to choose either or in that regard. Um, now, the other thing is cabling. So you have the choice between VGA or HDMI, and that's the cable you're gonna to need to actually get the display to work, the actual screen to turn on. Uh, the preferred one is always HDMI. Of course, it's a better connection. Of course, if you have access to DisplayPort, which kind of likes, looks like an HDMI uh, input, the actual male connection looks like an HDMI, but it has a flat side on one side. It's a good way to remember which one's DisplayPort. In this particular case, you have the cho choice between VGA or HDMI. Preferably go with the HDMI, uh, but if you don't have access to that and you have an older computer, then VGA should work perfectly fine. After that, you're going to need USB. All of these connect into the back of the display in the same place. That's to get the pen working. The USB is for the actual pen functionality. And last but not least, you want to have your power cable. And that remember that there's two parts. There's the power cable, that the plug that plugs into the wall, and it has to be connected to the adapter, the power adapter. And, the, and that cable is going to be the one that connects to the back of the display. When you're actually routing the wires through the back of it, uh, one of the things I recommend is there's a hole at the bottom of the stand itself that you can pass them through. And the advantage of doing that is if when you want to lift or when you want to lift or, or uh, lower the display itself, you're not going to have to move the wires out of the way all the time. That can become a bit of a nuisance. So it's a good way to keep the, the wires kind of controlled so that you can just move your display around without, without having to worry so much about cable management. The last thing here that I want to mention, just in regards to this whole setup process, is um, the glove. Before we actually start to get drawing, the glove itself. As I mentioned, Huion changed the design. Uh, I believe they changed the design. I don't know if you have access to the older versions. To this kind of one size fits all stretch fabric, slightly shorter uh, glove with, um, with the logo printed on the glove itself. The print is you know, it's a matter of personal preference. I like the tag on the older one, if you're all about looks and stuff like that. But I'm a good test subject for this glove because I've been using the older one for years. It's been my go-to glove. And this one I find too tight for my larger hands. I'm 6'3", so I have larger hands and um, I find it's very tight and it, you feel it. You feel like you've got, you feel like you're trying to wrap some tight, uh, um, 
strap around your hand and you can really feel the tightness. Of course, that would loosen up over time. I also personally preferred the old one because the wristband was a little bit higher. I like to feel like the glove's not there. So the very fact that I feel like I've got this tight glove around my hand feels a little bit restrictive. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's perfectly functional as far as that goes, but for larger hands, people might have a little bit of a complaint. But if you have average to smaller hands, I think you'll probably find it perfectly comfortable. All right, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of today's review. The display itself, what it looks and feels like, the pen, what it feels like to draw on this pen. Uh, but before I get started, as a little reminder and disclaimer, remember that Huyan did reach out to me to do this review, but my review is going to be entirely unbiased and I want to offer constructive feedback, uh, not only for you, the person who might want to purchase this, but to Huyan themselves on how they can better their products. Okay. Now let's take, that's the first thing I want to mention about this is that this is definitely by a long margin, a budget option to pen displays. Um, pen displays can easily go into the multi thousand dollar price tag. Okay, depending on, of course, where you're purchasing it, purchasing it from. So this is definitely a budget option. And I think with that said, um, what you're getting in terms of quality, in terms of the quality of the display, it is 1080p, but a very nice 1080p. I'm very comfortable on 1080p displays. Um, as far as the weight of it, the balance, uh, it doesn't wobble. It's a really nice work size. There, it isn't overly glary. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't pick up on a lot of uh, fingerprints or anything like that. Right out of the box, the feel, the actual feel and the weight and the quality of the display is um, fantastic for the price you're paying. And even if you're paying, play, uh, even if you're paying a little bit more, um, I think that it's worth the money as far as just the build quality. I'm not using it feeling to myself, this thing is going to break down. I don't feel that at all. I feel like this is something, definitely a product that's uh, high enough quality that it will last a long time. Drawing on the display, as far as the actual, actual pen weight and the pen uh, balance to its concern, the buttons themselves, um, I find that it feels nice. The actual surface feels really nice. It's got a delicate texture to it. Um, very similar to any other pen displays, for instance, from Wacom. You're, it's going to feel very familiar to you. Um, uh, so in that regard, just in regards to setting it up, drawing on it, image quality, of course, you're going to want to calibrate the monitor to get uh, proper color representation. That's definitely something you should do for any display that you buy. I definitely give that a thumbs up. I think it's a nice workable size and a good, decent quality um, for the price that you're paying for it. And with the promotion, I think that you're getting an incredibly good value for what you're paying for. Now, let me jump into some cons about this because I'm not sure if these are hardware or software related issues. I did mess around with the software, um, just the settings and everything like that to try to get it to work properly. Um, as far as the pen, as far as the pen's responsiveness and pen pressure is concerned, it feels fantastic above 5% pressure. Now this might seem like an incredibly picky thing to say, but it is very significant, uh, when you're drawing. And this relates to any type of artist. I'm somebody who does a lot more digital painting. So I'm used to blending. I'm used to, I paint with a, a more delicate brush very often, but I also gave this to my daughter who's now studying. She's in her second year of, uh, of illustration in college and she does a lot more line art. She's a little bit more animation focused as I've been over the years. And I took a chance to, to experiment both with painting and digital painting and doing more concept art type of stuff that requires a lot of blending and rendering. Uh, and I also did my own line test in case you're more of a line artist. And I also gave it to my daughter to, to, to ask her how she felt about it. Anything above five to 8% pressure, it picks up really nicely and it produces really nice results. I did not, I painted very, very slowly, uh, using a very subtle, very controlled line and it picked up really nicely. I didn't pick up on any of those very common wobbles that you can find when trying to do very extremely uh, uh, very, very controlled lines. All of that was great. However, this is something I want. If, if Huyan's listening to this, this is a bit of a game changer and it can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Anything below 5% pressure, 
those really delicate light touches, which is what you'd normally do if you're, for instance, color sampling. I usually set my, my pen to my, my, one of my pen buttons to the Alt key or Option if you're working on a Mac to just do quick, uh, to qu do quick eyedropper. Um, you have to press, you have to, you have to give it a good significant press for, for the pen display to pick up on that touch. And if you don't, you're constantly tap, 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 tap. You're pressing harder to get that thing to pick up. Furthermore, when you're just trying to do a color pick and, and blend gently, if you're painting with a very light brush stroke, which I do all the time, it's very common for me, um, it won't pick up half of the time. So it's very finicky under 5% pressure. In fact, I would argue that it doesn't pick up at all under 5% pressure which in all due honesty is very significant. Now, this isn't only significant for blending, this is also very significant for uh, line art because if you're doing a controlled thin to thick line, you really want to taper your, th your line off to a fine point. And when this is something that you do professionally, when this is something that you, put, you really cultivate and really put a lot of energy into developing your, your, your muscle finesse and control in order to do nice controlled lines, you got a really nice line, 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 and then as soon as you get to the end when you're just tapering it off to that fine point, the line disappears. And you it, it butchers your line. And you have to go over it and over and over it in order to fix it. Um, I thought perhaps this was a pen sensitivity issue. So I went back into the pen settings and I played, I played with every setting from super light to super hard. And it's the same across the board. It's just not picking up on that anything below 5%. If this is something that can be fixed, in um, uh, if this is something that can be fixed in a draw with a driver uh, update, awesome. That would be really wonderful. If it can't, if this is a hardware issue, then I'll be very frank with you. If you're planning on using this for professional work, this might be a deal breaker for you, because if you're somebody who takes your line and takes your rendering very seriously, as I do. This prevents me from being able to work properly. This will have a negative impact on the quality of my artwork. I'm just being straight with you. You know, whether this is a, uh, whether this was given to me from Huyan or whether I purchased this with my own money, if I had purchased this with my own money, I would return it for that very reason. It's a bit of a shame. But apart from that, anything above that 5% pressure mark and above, it works stunningly. It's absolutely beautiful. It picked up on my brushes, lovely. Uh, I, I could draw with a lot of control and finesse. I could whip it across. And don't forget, I decide, I, I tested this out because I didn't want to connect it to my, to my main computer. I connected it to my daughter's computer, which is an aged mule of a computer because she usually uses her laptop most of the time. So she just has this desktop as a side thing. It was my old, old, old computer going back many years. And Apart from a little bit of lag, almost insignificant lag, it was very, very workable. So even if you have an older computer that, you know, with, with like garbage RAM and it's still running on some old rusty old hard drive and all that kind of stuff, you shouldn't have any issue whatsoever working on this thing. Uh, I got very little brush lag, even though I've been spoiled with like iPad Pros and all. And, you know, I have, you know, a, a balling gaming computer at home and all that kind of stuff. It, that's not something that would interfere with my workflow, but that 5% uh, uh, pen pressure issue is significant as far as that goes. All right, so to summarize my review, let's look through the pros and cons, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this pen display. The pros. There are a lot of pros. You could easily spend double or triple on, an, on a similar quality display. The build quality, the stability of the stand itself. There's zero wobble. Any of the wobble that was happening in the video when I was drawing was the table. It wasn't the display itself. It's nice and stable. It's a nice, reliable build quality and the materials will last. I can feel that they will last and I own a lot of, a lot of electronics. So I know the good from the bad. Uh, the cabling is good quality. It's very easy to drive on the worst garbage computer. That's exactly what I did. I did it on an old clunker donkey computer and it worked beautifully with a little bit of lag, but I mean, we're really talking bottom of the barrel computers here, but it drove it perfectly well. A nice, good quality uh, uh, 1080p, non-glare, non-smudgy display. So that's fantastic and hugely important. Um, 
and it's a nice looking display. It's very versatile, it's light, it's something that won't take up too much space on your desktop. So it's definitely something that can work for pretty much anybody with any reasonable size desk, as far as that goes. And there's even the chance of portability if you wanted to throw it in a bag with a laptop. Um, however, there's that Achilles heel. And this is my suggestion to Huyan, and I'll be, I'll be letting them know directly. Uh, I'll be sharing this feedback with them directly as well. I really honestly do believe in this product, and I really honestly do believe in Huyan's um, uh, desire to offer good quality budget options. Um, and this really teeters, in my opinion, as far as everything I've mentioned already, it teeters on the edge of a higher tier of product. I would, would not put this in the bottom. I would put this in the mid tier of products. You're definitely getting quality for what you're paying for. However, the Achilles heel and this Achilles heel, I really hope is a driver issue. I hope this is a software issue that can be ironed out quickly and efficiently. And that's that 5% pen pressure. It is so silly and so trivial, but this is something that will impact every single brush stroke you make. Unless you draw with a slightly heavier hand if you're somebody that puts a little bit more pressure in but maybe it's just my particular device maybe i have one that's faulty but um, both myself and my daughter tested out with line and tested it out with blending and paint and that is something that impacts every brush stroke it does not pick up on those lightest on those lightest pressures if you can iron that out with a driver update, then this then consider this a hands down recommendation for me because everything else they really literally knocked out of part out of the park, particularly for the amazing price and getting it on a promotion. My opinion is grab it. So if they do, I'm definitely going to keep up with the driver updates with Huyan. And if and when they do update this, rest assured that I'm going to update this video and I'll link it. So if you see any pop-ups or if you see any links in the description that link you to the update of this, where they've ironed out the problem, um, definitely go and check that out. I'll link it here in the video directly. Otherwise, you can go and check the link in the description below if you want to pick one up for yourself and uh, treat yourself to a beautiful pen display that you can stick on your desktop and show off to all your family and friends and have them ooh and awe and tell you how beautiful and sexy and perfect you are. I definitely recommend it for that for sure because it'll look good on anybody's, on anybody's desk setup. All right, so thank you for joining me, everybody. Hopefully this is a comprehensive enough review that'll help you with your purchasing decisions. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. All right, take care, everybody.